Shoot them. Burn their bodies and crush their bones. 1929. Three men are missing in the Australian outback. The perfect setting for the perfect murder. Aussie crime author Arthur Upfield is writing his latest novel. Like many men post the Great War, Upfield is working the rabbit-proof fence. Out here, with no distractions, he can write freely. After long stints in the outback, Upfield is a regular at Drone Dairy Camel Station. He enjoys the company of its overseer, George Ritchie, often sharing a late Arvo drink. Men often come and go in these parts. Only occasionally does a new bloke arrive on the scene. G'day lads, the name's Snowy Rolls. Got any work? Late one night, Upfield tells Richie that he's struggling to conceive the murder plot in his latest novel. I'll offer a pound to whoever can come up with the perfect murder for my story. Richie reckons he's got it worked out. Easy. First you entice your victim into the bush. Richie continues, and Upfield has his murder plot. With the novel now complete, Upfield sends the manuscript to his publisher in London. It's a murder mystery called The Sands of Windy. Over the next few months, Upfield is joined by police. They're trying to solve a mystery of their own. Three men are missing. Men you might know. James Ryan, George Lloyd and Louis Caron. Upfield had spent time with some of the missing men at Drome Dairy Camel Station. And as they continue their investigation, police believe the men were murdered. They turn their attention to Upfield's newly released novel. It's the murder plot that's caught their attention. An uncanny coincidence between fact and fiction. While searching for the men, police discovered campfires full of burnt bodies and crushed bones, just like the murder plot in Upfield's book. Astonishingly, the murders had taken place before the book was published. Ritchie had helped Upfield with the murder plot months earlier. Either of these men could have committed the murders. But it was at this point that the penny, or let's say the pound, drops for Upfield. Upfield remembers another time when Richie recounted the murder plot. There were far more men listening in. In the corner of the room was the newly arrived Snowy Rolls. G'day lads, the name's Snowy Rolls. Got any work? First you entice your victim into the bush. Shoot him and burn the body. Pass the ashes through a sieve and retrieve unburnt bones and metal pieces. Dissolve metal in acid and crush any bones and toss it into the wind. Shoot a couple of roos and burn them in the same place. What had been the perfect murder plot for Upfield's novel was to Snowy Rolls, inspiration for the perfect murder. Young and ambitious, it was no secret that Rolls was sick of working along the fence. He wanted his own business. To do this, he needed money and a car. And he was willing to kill for it. But he had made one big mistake. He missed a crucial step from George Ritchie's perfect murder. He didn't sift for metals. In the ashes, police discover items that trace back to the missing men. A tooth and a wedding ring belonging to Louis Caron the man whose paycheck Snowy Rolls had cashed. Upfield also recalled seeing Snowy driving the car of one of the missing men, James Ryan. Yeah, he, he lent me his car. He's gone up to Mount Magnet. Despite damning evidence, Snowy is charged for the murder of only one of the missing men, Louis Caron. Tried and convicted, Snowy is sentenced to death by hanging. The prosecution's star witness is Arthur Upfield, who, in search of the perfect murder plot, 
wrote one of the most intriguing chapters in Australian true crime history. As for the other two missing men, they were never found. Is it possible that Snowy Rolls did in fact pull off the perfect murder? <laughs>